Today I have hopefully a simple little project, but it's grown in scope. This is just a uh, simple cassette port adapter for tapping five volts off the cassette port for an SD to IEC or for a PET SD+. I didn't end up using this because I opted instead to power my uh, SD to IEC via USB cable because I didn't necessarily want to obscure the cassette port. I decided instead that I wanted to use this to solve a little problem that I have with my PET 2001. My PET 2001 is a very early model from October of 1977. You can see here the motherboard doesn't even have a solder mask on it. I think this is the first version of the motherboard. I don't know if you can see here, but this board has a flaw. The uh, copper pads here that connect to the cassette port don't have any vias to connect to the bottom side of the board. These traces here have vias that run down to the underside of the board, but they don't cross this ground here and they don't have any vias to connect them back up to these top pads. It's the same with the second cassette port in the back. These top pads don't have any connection on them at all. This isn't a problem for the internal cassette where the contact wipers are actually on the bottom of the connector. For later versions of the cassette, the contact wipers are on the top. So if I try to plug this in, here or in the cassette 2 port in the back, there's no connection. Contact wipers are on the top here and there's just no connection to these pads. It was suggested that I could just drill some small holes in the back of those pads and make my own views, but I didn't want to make any alterations to the board. So I thought, why not just use this? There are vias on these traces here that bridge the top and bottom side of the board. So with this plugged in, I could plug any old data set into that and it would work. And that's when things started to creep a little bit and I thought, I could still tap 5 volts off of there and provide it on a female USB connector. That'll let me plug my SD to IEC or PET SD Plus into this when I wanted to. And then I thought, if I get myself a 7-pin mini DIN adapter connector, I could use it as an adapter for the Plus 4 to connect a standard data set. So that's my plan now to create, uh, let's put this together as an adapter, tap five volts off of it, and connect a uh, plus four adapter cable to it. To connect this, I'm gonna need a short length of wire that is at least six conductors. This is actually seven conductors. So I thought, why not use some Cat5? There are eight conductors in here, and it fits on the connector shell. The Cat5 wire I'm using is the kind used in patch cables with uh, stranded wire instead of solid. It's more flexible that way. And I've gone ahead and decided on a color code to use for connecting these wires at both ends. On this end and on the plus four side. Something you need to be careful about when dealing with these connectors is that this pinout is from the point of view of the female connector. When you're looking at a male connector end on, the pins are mirrored. However, when you're soldering on them from the back side, they should be the same. I've got most of them attached, just trying to get the last two wires on here. This is actually pretty tedious. Drag the heat shrink tubing up here. Just toning out the cable here. Orange wire should be around here and the ground wire should be the other ground is the sense that's the right line blue white is here, that's the read line. And over here, that's the motor. And that is right down here. So we've got good continuity.
I've bent in these contacts here and inserted the board. There are labels on the back side of the board here. This indicates pin 1, 2, 3, and this is A, B, C. I've written on the top here, tops, because there's no key in here, so I want to make sure I don't put it in backwards. I've got my USB cable and my plus four cable. And I believe what I'll do is use these holes right here to zip tie both of these to the board, one on top and one on the bottom. the orange and the brown wires which are both ground C should be the cassette motor which is I can get a zip tied in here There it is. I hope it works. I'll test it out. Plug it into the pet here, see if it solves the first problem. Let's see if this works now. Fast forward. Rewind. I don't think I've ever loaded from number two before. Press and play on tape number two. Sense work. Seems to work. Just for fun, I want to try something here. This is a 7-pin mini den end-to-end -end connector. So if I plug this in to one side, I should be able to plug the 1531 into the other side. So I've got the two connected through this end connector. Plug it into the pet, see if it works. Smoke test. Got power, fast forward and rewind. Loading from device two, pressing play. That seems to work. Now well, let's try it on the plus four. Plug this in here and Make the data set the right way around. It has power. Rewind. Press play. Senses. Found. And loaded.
Now let's see if I can tap the 5 volts off. Got my SD to IEC. And we'll just plug it into the USB cable right there. Oh, there's no smoke. Let's try to load from here. Looks like that works. Set pass through seems to work just fine. So there it is. A universal bi-directional cassette port adapter for the 1531 and the plus four as well as a 5 volt power tap but I should warn you if you build one of these you need to be careful don't connect anything to a USB connector here that isn't designed to run off the cassette port if you draw too much power through here you could blow the fuse or worse that's it for now thanks for watching